So to illustrate some of these ideas about composition, let's do a simple painting exercise. Put a sheet of canvas paper on your easel, oriented landscape style. Put some burnt umber on your palette, along with a little dab of cadmium red light, and place some medium in the cup. Now I'm going to show you how I always start a painting. I do a rough end of the composition, including a dab of color for my focal point. We'll do that basic rough in here, and you'll see how this works. Remember the rule of thirds? I have decided I want my focal point to be somewhere on the canvas that's going to match up with the rule of thirds. And that means probably right about here. And I thought, well, I'd like this to be a small red house. So I'm going to pick up my number five flat brush, put a little dab of the cadmium red paint on it, and add just a little bit of medium. This is where I know I want it because of the rule of thirds. So with just a couple of strokes, I'll indicate where I want this little house to be. Not a big deal, just a couple of strokes. You go ahead and try it. Now there is something to look at on that canvas. And it's red. Bingo, a focal point. But we need more. Let's figure out a way for our viewer to feel like he could actually get into this painting. We'll make a path for his eye to follow. I'll load my number five filbert with some burnt umber. I'm going to mix this burnt umber with a little bit of medium just so that it flows a little better. You should be getting pretty comfortable with these medium consistencies by now. I'm going to make a series of marks. Let's watch while I do this. See how these marks form a dotted line leading right up to our focal point? This is a pattern, and this is how patterns work. The dotted lines lead us up to the, to the focal point. If I were to develop this painting, I would make that path look like stepping stones. Now do the same thing on yours. After our viewer has looked at the house, he will want to explore the rest of the painting. Let's give him something to follow. A rhythmic row of short vertical lines. If you have any red in your brush, wipe it out. I don't think I do. Ah, yeah, I do. So wipe the red out of your brush. and load it with some of this burnt umber paint that we have on the palette. Then watch what I'm doing. See this? Short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long, short, 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 long. You hear that rhythm? We have a picket fence leading the viewer's eye toward the left of the canvas. Now you do it on yours. What should we put at the left of the canvas? Well, so far, we have a lot of little, maybe rather picky things in the right and center of the canvas. That means it's time to add balance to the painting. We're thinking about dynamic balance. Remember what I said? One large thing can balance a lot of small things. So let's try a large mass over here. We can think that maybe a tree might look good over there. So. I'm just going to use my number five, my number ten, filbert, and some medium 
to mix up a little mayonnaise quality paint here with the burnt umber. We'll use this to scribble in a heavy dark mass. I'm just scribbling in something here. You remember how we start with with trees or whatever mass. It doesn't look much like a tree when it's just a mass, but we know it's going to be a tree. Okay, now we have a pattern leading in. Boom, the focal point, rhythm, a mass to balance everything that's over here. So we're doing pretty well, but we need something to bring the viewer's eye back to the bottom of the canvas. The point is to lead the viewer back to the path so that she follows it back up to our focal point again. I think a tree trunk would do the job just fine. And the tree trunk qualifies as a line. It will point right down toward the bottom of the canvas. Just like that. Just to make doubly sure we don't lose our viewer, let's put a root pointing back to the path. And there, now you have a composition. You used color, contract for, co color contrast for your focal point, pattern to lead the eye toward the focal point, rhythm to move the eye around the canvas, mass for balance, and line to get the eye started on its journey again. This composition is a simple circle.